Welcome to Intello Videos. In this video, I would like to show you the functionality of the second sense electrode. The second sense electrode, or S2, is an additional voltage follower which can measure a second voltage versus the reference electrode. For example, the potential on the counter electrode within the same electrochemical cell. It's also possible to measure the impedance on the counter electrode with the S2 electrode. The second voltage follower is part of the true parallel data acquisition system architecture, having a dedicated signal acquisition path. This allows Vionic to sample the highest possible number of points, which can be averaged per each mains frequency period. It's worth noting the fact that the second voltage follower uses the galvanically isolated analog ground as the electronic reference. This means that the electronic reference point is not connected to Earth, for the user, this translates into a possibility to use the second sense also when the instrument is operated in floating mode. With the second sense electrode, it is not possible to apply a potential to the S2 electrode. The S2 electrode is only able to measure a potential difference between the reference electrode. The second sense electrode is not an independent working electrode which means it cannot be used as a bipotential set, for example, in rotating ring disk electrode experiments. The S2 is not an independent potential set or galvanostat channel, so it's not possible to measure the current on the S2 electrode. To test the functionality of the S2, there is a specific circuit on the Otlip test cell as seen on this slide. When running the default cyclic voltammetry potential static procedure from the Ortlab library, the potential between the reference and the sense is applied from minus 1 volt to plus 1 volt. The current Vionic is going to measure will be, with respect to Ohm's law, 1 volt divided by 10 kilo ohm, which results in 100 microamp of current. 100 microamp of current is flowing between the counter electrode and the working electrode. The S2 measures the voltage difference between the reference and the S2. The resistance between the reference and the S2 is 90 kilo ohm in this outlook test cell. If we multiply this with 100 microamp current, it will result in a voltage measurement of 9 volt. This plot shows the working electrode potential, the blue line, which is set in the main parameters in the Intello software. From 0 volt to plus 1 volt, vertex to minus 1 volt, and back to 0 volt again. This is the potential which is applied between the sense and the reference electrode. The red line shows the measured voltage between the second sense and the reference electrode which is the measured S2 potential. As you can see, when the working electrode potential is positive, the second sense potential will be negative. This is due to the definition of the sense and the second sense versus the reference electrode, respectively. You will find more information about this topic in the Intello user manual. Welcome to the Intello software. In the procedures, you will find CV staircase potential static, so when I double click on this one, we can go to the sequence and go to the CV staircase command. When we double click on the command, in the signals tab, you will find S2 potential. When we enable it, this means that we now can measure the second sense potential with the same time as the working electrode potential. We can create a specific customized plot by drag and drop the command in the plot ribbon, like this, and press custom plot. What we would like to see is we'd like to see the time on the x-axis, the potential applied on the left y-axis, and the potential which we measure, the S2 potential, on the right axis. And we're also going to couple it isotropic so we can see the difference in the axis. Then we can create 
this plot. And now you'll see on the left side potential applied and the measured potential on the second sense with different colors. The first plot is uh, potential applied with respect to the measured current. That's just a straight line. But to visualize it, we're going to monitor it with respect to time. So my procedure is set, instrument is running, and then I press the start button. So we go from zero to one volt, back to minus one volt, and uh, we stop at zero volt again. And we scan at 100 millivolt a second. We press start, stabilization time, five seconds, and then the measurement is starting. You will see that on the left side, the potential which is applied by the potential set on the working electrode is from 0 to 1 volt. And on the second sense, we measure the potential from 0 first to minus 9 volts and up to plus 9 volts. So the measurement is finished, and here you'll see the results of the measurement. Let's look into the details related to the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy measurements on the second sense electrode. During electrochemical impedance spectroscopy measurements, the main impedance is always measured between the sense and the reference electrode. It's also possible to measure the impedance on the counter electrode by connecting the S2 electrode to the CE, as shown in this picture. If we consider a typical three electrode setup and the sense electrode connected to the working electrode and the second sense connected to the counter electrode, you can see in the slide what is actually measured in the electrochemical cell. In the dark green part, you will see what the main EIS measure measures between reference and the sense electrode. And for the same cell, this is what is measured between the reference electrode and the second sense electrode. You can see that the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy on the second sense will measure the electrode kinetics on the counter electrode and will also measure the solution resistance between the counter electrode and the reference electrode. The next Outlook test cell example shows the simultaneous measuring of the impedance on both the counter electrode and the working electrode on asymmetric circuits. In this example, a 1 kilo ohm charge transfer resistance and a 1 mega ohm charge transfer resistance. More exactly, connect the W, E and the S cables together and connect it to the lower charge transfer resistance, in this case the 1 kilo ohm, and connect the CE plus the S2 cables together and connect it to the higher charge transfer resistance, which is in this example the 1 mega ohm. Welcome to Intello Software. In the procedures, you will find EIS potential static as a default procedure. In the default procedure, we measure the impedance on the working electrode. To enable the impedance measurement on the second sense, we have to uh, enable the S2 signals. So we go to sequence. In the sequence, we'll find EIS frequency scan. When we double click on it, you will find the tab button signals. And in the main instrument, you will find the S2 impedance data. So now we're also recording um, the impedance on the S2 electrode. We can also see what kind of frequency spectrum we're going to measure. Well, the first frequency is from 10 kilohertz to 1 hertz. This we can change in the main parameters. And we scan uh, 10 frequencies per decade. Then we go to the main parameters. In the main parameters, we have 
the offset potential, stabilization time. The first frequency is 10,000 Hz, and the last frequency is, is 1 Hz. We apply it a 10 millivolt amplitude, and we can record the S2 signal with the same time as the working electrode signal. So we can drag and drop the icon from the procedure directly into the plot ribbon. And then we can enable the mode plot for S2. And can do the same thing with the Nyquist plot of S2. Like this. Now my procedure is ready. And as you've shown in the previous slide, the blue line will be the main uh, impedance data. So that's the 1 kilo ohm resistance, charge transfer resistance. And the red line will be the S2 data. And that's the 1 mega ohm charge transfer resistance. So this is what we're going to expect in the measurement. The procedure is loaded in Vionic. And we just press the start button. So first we have an equilibration stabilization time of five seconds, and then the first frequencies are going to be applied. We go from 10,000 hertz to 1 hertz, and we measure the impedance on the working electrode and the S2 at the same time. So if you open the Nyquist plot, you will see that the blue line is the main EAS measurement, so that's the 1 kilo ohm charge transfer resistance, and the red line is the S2 signal, the 1 mega ohm charge transfer resistance. You already see the difference here appearing. The blue line will go to roughly 1100 ohm because we're starting at 100 ohm in our test cell and the diameter of the semicircle shows out shows the charge transfer resistance of the test cell it's almost finished of course you can scan in a lower frequency as last frequency but that takes longer of time and uh, to show the complete uh, semicircle of the one mega ohm. But if we, if we zoom in at the end of the measurement, so the measurement is finished, we can zoom in on this lower part, and here you'll find the test cell of the 1000 ohm. You see, the diameter from 100 ohm to 1100 ohm is uh, 1000 ohm charge transfer resistance. Thank you for watching Intello videos. If you found this Intello video helpful, please like and share with your colleagues. You can subscribe to the Metrum Autlab YouTube channel so you are notified when new videos are available.